The whole essence of bringing all these kind of people is for you to take knowledge from them and run with it. We feel we have so many limitations and we're inhibited by so many things. But most of it is lack of knowledge. And we've just got to change the game because we have to change our country. And Tara's story is most inspiring. What she has done, you can do. Now, I want her to tell you what her major learning points are. Now, she's talking about, she was talking about limitations. And I don't know whether many of you know, um, I'm one of Mr. Wishika's mentees, meaning that I've served, I have been one of the young people she's taking time, spent time to talk to, develop my business. So every time I'm going through a season and I need to take an, I don't see her all the time, but when I see her, I know that I, I can tell her the problems I'm having and she's able to advise me. And while she was speaking just now about limitations, I remembered there was a season where um, we, we, we just wanted to produce, started producing the makeup line, correct? But in producing the makeup line, going to China, you'll be asked to produce a large volume, okay? And large volume is one shade, one color. 2,000 pieces, 5,000 pieces, you have to produce 5,000 pieces. Did I have 5,000 people in terms of the market? At the time, no, okay? So the question for me was, that was a limitation. First of all, I didn't have enough money, okay, to invest in 10 colors, 15 colors at a time. But guess what I did? Guess what I did? I produced only three lip glosses and three eyeshadows. So an entire makeup line was, was started on only six items. Somebody will say, uh uh, I cannot start. <laughs> because how do you start a product line with only six items? I looked, at the, I looked at the colors and I picked the colors that I knew that the women will always like. They will always use. Some of the things that limitation does for you, it helps you to become creative. Your brain begins to work and you begin to think out of the box. So sometimes it's okay not to have money. Because you know what? Sometimes when you have money, you begin to spend even more than you have. It makes you go mad. When I didn't have, it made me to think and think of creative ways. When I gave the man 15 color shades that I wanted and he said to me, you have to do 15 shades, you have to do 5,000 pieces of each one of them. By the time you calculated the numbers, 30,000, 50,000, I knew I didn't have the finances to do that. So I took what I could do. And I picked the colors that I thought that women will use. And yet again, I used my competence, which is I knew what suited the women, but also the ones that when the customers, the consumer sees it, they automatically pick it up. That was one limitation. Two, at another phase of the business now, it, become, it had become a more competitive business. After I started, it's typical when you start a business, you are the pioneer. After a while, other people begin to enter because they begin to see how people are responding to the business. And it became more and more competitive. And of course, at this stage, I could no longer do only 10 eyeshadows, 5 eyeshadows. I needed to have more volumes because people were now bringing in international brands who had the volume in terms of 50 eyeshadows, 25 powders, all kinds of shades. And I didn't have that. Okay? But the limitation at this time was, oh, I don't have enough money to take it to the next level. I didn't have that. But one thing I had was, I had all my monies banked. What did I say? I had what? All my money's banked. Meaning, when sales came in, I was disciplined enough not to touch it. I was known as an Ijebu, and I'm proud to be called an Ijebu till this present day. No, she's a Shakiri girl. Even than Delta. Right? I banked the money, and I'm happy that I did. Because when I got their chance, the chance to go to the bank, I had enough information for the bankers to see that this is someone who's prudent and who's committed to their vision. That was one. Two, I had enough products in store to use as collateral, my own products. It's more like putting your money where your mouth is, okay? If you come to me and you say, I want you to invest in my business, I want to see how much you have invested in your business. And they could see it in the volume of stock that I had on ground for what I had. For three, I had practiced my story. What did I say? I had done what? Practiced my story. And I will explain why. I went to see Mr. Woshika and she said to me, I've heard you share your, the House of Tara story. And it's a very inspirational story. When you get to the, when you had this opportunity, just share your story. Now, when she heard me, I had already practiced it. And when I say practice, I stood in front of the mirror 
And I said to myself, this is where I am coming from. I started my business with 15,000 Naira. I had a makeup box. I went from house to house, doing makeup for people, collecting 2,000 Naira, 2005. I grew from 2005 to 5,000, to 10,000. I not only did that, I started to train people. I practiced that story. I started to train people and develop people who became makeup artists. And many of them today are own, own their own business. So I have become somebody who's an employer of labor as well. And from training people, I started to, I created my own product line. And today, the Tara makeup line is the fastest growing indigenous makeup brand. I practiced my story. Now, you have to stand in front of the mirror and tell your story. First of all, you have to practice how you want it to be told, eventually. And in practicing that story today, Mr. Awashika had heard me say that story. And she said to me, when you get this opportunity, do the same thing that you've done before. And I did it. When the bankers heard my story, the first thing the, 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 the man said to me was, this is the kind of story our bank would like to support. He didn't, that story was not relevant to him until, first of all, he saw that I was disciplined enough to, to put the money in the bank, one. Two, he saw that I understood my business, had gotten to a point where I understood my business. I knew how well I was doing. I knew the areas where I needed to work on. By the time I was sharing my story with him, I knew that this, this was the time. And I walked away getting my first bank loan for the first time in my business history. And I'm happy at the time that I got it because if I had gotten it earlier than that, I may have spent it wrongly. Ignite from dreams to reality. What do I like? I like what I do. I like going on holiday with my family. And I like my car. I like gadgets. And I like my bank. If your bank were us, you would like us too. Since 1894, we have built a strong and stable financial institution based on insightful local know-how, global reach, and a commitment to deliver to you world-class innovative solutions. First Bank, truly the first. Ignite, from dreams to reality. Now, when you started your business, there were some challenges you could foresee. That now, some challenges, there's some obstacles, some hurdles you had to go first. For the ones you could see, the ones you could um, predict. Now, along the line, you had some you were not expecting. How were you able to cross them when you got to, that, um, got to the challenge? Well, because it was a new business, it was a new industry totally. Everything was a surprise. Everything was new. Um, and even the challenges were new as well. Um, at some point, when I started, the ability to convince people, okay, was not something that I, I, I thought, it wasn't a hurdle I thought I was going to face all the time, but I did, okay? And, um, and after a while, it, it was not enough just to do it. Somebody was getting married. I had to start convincing the bride's mother that she needed my service as well. And to, and, and to not only to say, you, as the mother of the bride, you also equally need to look as beautiful as the bride. It was something that I didn't expect, that I, I, did, I thought that the women would automatically jump at it. Um, to start a training school, for example, people were, were coming and they were willing, they were not willing to pay. They wanted to do what you call apprenticeship. You know what that is? You just come, you'll be omoishe, isn't it? Uh, but I didn't understand the concept of omoishe, okay? And how did I overcome it? I just charged. Um, and, I, and there were people who refused to pay. I let them go. Um, and then after a while, the more I stayed consistent in my refusal, for the Omoishe, and I said, you know, you can only be an Omoishe after you've gone through the training and you're paid. So you can do an apprenticeship after you have received the training. Um, looking, for example, uh, finding a place. I mean, I was, I was working most of the time for my mom's house, and it meant that at some point, when my mother had guests and my customers came, I had to, what would I do? Tell my customers to walk away, isn't it? And allow my mom's guests. And I needed a place. Um, and at the time, I didn't even know what, what kind of office I should get because it was not a regular business. So what office do you make? Is it, is it an office with a chair and a table? Is it a studio? And I came up with the concept of a makeup studio. And renting the place, looking, trying to set it up was a challenge. Um, and I, I went to speak to an, uh, a friend of mine who does interiors, and she said to me, you know what? 
I can't even tell you because I don't understand your business as well, okay? Guess what? Just go there every day, sit down on the chair, and as you sit there, ideas will come to you. And that's what I did. I will go there in the morning, not do anything, just sit down. And after a while, I thought, okay, I will put this here and put that, and ideas started to come, come to me over and over again. And the challenges have been endless. I mean, at the, at the level where we are, at the beginning, we had some challenges. We don't have those challenges anymore because we've learned We've learned how to recruit better, for example. Um, you say to me, I would say at that time, oh, I would just employ anybody who said they were interested in doing makeup. But you know, after they go out to go and do makeup, on it, wake up, have to wake up at 5 a.m. some days to go to a bride's house at 7, they realize this thing is not a joke. Because you know when they were coming, they were just, oh, is it not just makeup? It's just makeup. And then they let us realize that makeup is equally hard work. And you, you finish from one bright house, you go to another bright house. Whether it's raining, you can't tell the bride, oh, it was raining, so I couldn't make it to your house. No, you get in the rain and you get to the house. And after a while, I had to learn to recruit differently. So how? When I'm interviewing people now, I know one thing for sure. The girl has to have good skin. Okay? Because when the customer walks into the shop, they want to see how nice the makeup looks on their face. They don't want to see that you have pimples. <laughs> Correct? At that time, I didn't know. So after a while, I would employ, just employ any random person. Somebody who's able, who's confident. There are some people who are naturally confident, some people are not. Somebody who can engage a customer um, in a conversation and, and advise them on how to apply their products on their faces. And these are some of the things that I faced at that point. But some of those things we don't face anymore, but we have now bigger challenges. So I always say to people that for every season, there's, there are new challenges that come with it, but we're equal to the task, correct? Okay, next question. While starting up, there would have been times you needed money. How were you able to raise the money? And two, did you have to borrow or how did you go about it? Because definitely at a point in time, you need to grow your business. Before you get to level, you have to go to bank for bank loans. So how were you able to face that? Knowing you have to pay bills. I'm sure you're married. You also have needs. You said you banked every money. So how were you able to survive? There are certain skills that I learned when I didn't have the opportunity to get a bank loan. One of them was negotiation, okay? So for example, I wanted to rent an office space. I negotiated part payment. I negotiated post-dated checks. Um, first of all, you know, with the, with the landlord, he would say to you, you must pay me my two years rent, isn't it? And I negotiated pays for six months. First, I will give you a check for six months so you keep the space for me. And then I'll pay the rest over a period of time. And um, you'll be surprised. Sometimes you don't ask because you think they're going to say no. And many times you don't ask, but they may have said yes. And so my, one of the things, that, one of the skills I had to learn was negotiation, how to, how, to, how to appeal to someone in a way that you know that I'm still going to deliver on my promise, but I can get, I can get something from you. That was one. Two, in terms of my product line, for example, I had the opportunity of, um, yes, I was producing in China, but with China, when you first of all um, make a deposit, by the time they finish your production over a period of maybe two months, your money has to be ready. So I had to also learn the savings culture of putting money aside towards the, the, the two months time. So you have deposited, isn't it? And you, you, you decide to produce your order. You, they tell you how much time it's going to take for them to finish. Um, and I had to keep money aside towards that. You know, it's almost like saving, saving towards a particular goal. And you have that behind your mind. And when you have that behind your mind, you're not going to spend more money on your credits and talking to people frivol frivolously, right? Um, if you had a girlfriend that used to call before, then you go and visit, visit her in her house more, okay? And you, you, you just begin to plan better because you know. Um, that's another skill. So saving, saving and saving in a, in a more purposeful way, um, negotiation. Three, I also believe in, 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 um, in um, divine relationships and encounters. And I would say, for example, at some stage, after producing, I still did not have enough money to pay. And a Chinese man said to me, I will send you the goods. When you sell, pay me. Well, I couldn't have gotten that from, I don't know why he did it. Five years down the line, I asked him one day, why did he do it? He said he doesn't know. He just felt that the same way I was confident enough to give him my first deposit, he felt that he needed to also do the same for me. He did it. I think that that was more of a divine um, um, encounter or a divine involvement than I would say was any business thing. So I believe in that as well. Um, and three, um, 
I also believe in, you know, you have French friends. You have friends, you have relationships. Um, people have to know that you're a person of integrity. When you're in university and you behave a certain way, you think to yourself, well, this is just uni. It's a lie. Your brand has been created from back in the days. People that knew me from secondary school always expected me to become a successful lawyer. Successful lawyer, but maybe not an entrepreneur, but successful. So I always came across like a serious-minded person who was going somewhere, isn't it? So when you behave, when you have relationships and friendships, remember that your behavior, if you are someone that says, I am coming, and they should check every time you say that, then you know you're already investing in a bad brand. So when I go up to a friend and say, oh yeah, please borrow me 200,000. I will give you in two weeks or three weeks time. If I'm not even able to give you in three weeks time, I'm also, I know it's important for me to communicate to you that, oh, I cannot give you now. I will give you in another two weeks. So those are some of the things that I did to put us through that season. And then sometimes also, I have money tied down in stock. Okay? My eye is out there looking for more money, but I still have money here. So the question is, this stock that I have here, what can I do to move it faster so I can get the money quicker? Do I need to put them on sale? Do I need to reduce the prices? Do I need to go through a real marketing campaign where I, saw, I set a goal for myself as to how many of these items I have to sell within the next two weeks? Those are some of the things that I did, you know, consistently before I ever had the chance to go to the bank to get a loan. What is the criteria you use in fixing your price for your service and your product? That's number one. Then secondly, you are, I believe in your list of clients and all that, you have different profiling for, for them. The area of their financial base, <laughs> their estate, the and, all, yeah, and all that. So how do you fix the price for them? Because in business, we were taught that you have to be ethical, you have to be fair, and you have to back up your pricing with integrity. And at the same time... <laughs> At the same time, you need to make profit. Yes. You yes. need to make a good profit from your business. So how do you balance okay. all this? Okay. Um, how do you determine your pricing? But at that time, I know I told you initially that I charged one five. And when the person said, eh, hey, is that all? I thought to myself, okay, I should charge more. Because I felt that the person placed more value in terms of monetary value to the service that I have offered. And so I thought, okay, it's time to increase it to the amount that I presume was better. So she said, I, I offered, I said one five, and then she said, oh, I thought it was like two five. The next person that came along, how much did I tell them? <laughs> two five. Do you, I don't believe in giving people prices because of their status. I think it's unethical. But you know what I do? If I know that you can afford it, then do multiples. So the difference between you and the governor's daughter is that on your wedding day, you can have only one makeup session. If you have a governor's daughter or a millionaire's daughter, you will have it for your introduction, you have it for your wife's wedding, you have it for your traditional wedding, you have it for your night party, you have it for the groom's party, you have it the day you are going to your husband's house. By the time, by the time I'm charging you, who is a regular girl, 2,500 naira, and I do multiple for the millionaire's daughter. I make more money, right? But I charge you the same. So at the end of the day, when the two of you are having a conversation, when you also become a big woman, I say, how much did Tara charge you? Two, five. Well, she came for one session. I just, I couldn't afford the engagement. But then with you, you know that I, I charge you for the multiples. Then also, if you can afford it, your grandmother will have her makeup done. Your mother will have her makeup done. Your, your mother-in-law will have her makeup done. That is how you show you can tell me that you guys have bought Your bridal trade, your entire bridal trade. Ignite from dreams to reality. What do I like? I like what I do. I like going on holiday with my family. And I like my car. I like gadgets. And I like my bank. If your bank were us, you would like us too. Since 1894, we have built a strong and stable financial institution based on insightful local know-how, global reach, and a commitment to deliver to you world-class innovative solutions. First Bank, truly the first. 
Ignite from dreams to reality. This is Tara. Tara, House of Tara has many makeup girls. But if the millionaire's daughter or the billionaire's daughter decides that I don't want any of your girls, oh, I only want you. Yes. For you to have Tara, yes. be the one to come and make you up. It's more. You can charge five times more. Yeah. It's a premium you create for the value you believe you're worth, mm -hmm. but it's a choice. And the one who chooses to buy a Ferrari is not the same man as the man who buys Toyota. Do you understand what I'm saying? In that case, she's not cheating. You've created the price and the value, but you've left an option. And sometimes you actually do it to deter the customer. Because at her level, she doesn't want to spend the time going around anybody's house to make them up. But if you say, look, I want House of Tara to be responsible for the, this wedding, but I want Tara herself. You say, Tara is not available. No, Tara is the only one who wants to say, okay, go and tell them, they're ready to pay me one million, I'll come. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And many a times when somebody's insisting that they want you, they really want you. And that's why they're also willing to pay more. Do you understand? So that's a differentiation, that's a value, but a value that then commands the price and creates better profit. Mm -hmm. But how many such customers do you think will be there? Not that many. Not as you many. But when those moments come, they create an added opportunity for it, the choice. It's not your general pricing policy. In Nigeria now, you know, when you are producing a good, maybe drugs or pharmaceutical uh, products, maybe you register with NAVDAC or other things. Do you face any challenges doing with this? Yes. Um, initially, yes. Um, we had to get a listing. We had to get a NAVDAC number. Um, because Snapdark will insist that if you're bringing products from America, they, they have to be products that are for Nigerian standards. And so you have to go through the process, taking your products in, they put, they, they take them to their, um, lab, to their labs to test the products and find whether there are certain, there are anything, anything, any ingredients in it that is not good for the exactly. woman's skin, yeah, or the human con consumption. And th that's what they determine whether they give you a number or not. You pay a lot of money for it. But those are some of the things that we have to do as, as business owners in Nigeria. I want to ask you how you cope with customer diversity. Like, how do you relate with your customers? Mm. Um, well, for, for us as a business, customer service is very important. Um, I'm very happy that, you know, I think that, it, I think even customer service stems, first of all, from simple manners. Okay? Manners that you are taught at home as a child. Um, Treat people the way you want them to be treated. You want to be treated. Okay. Um, smile at people when you when you meet them. Um, um, ask, say something nice to a customer. You know, when you see someone, compliment something about them. Whether there's always something you like about somebody, whether it's the button on their jacket or it's their shoe. These are little things that you learn as growing up. You know, those are some of the basic things. But in terms of diversity, customers that are problematic, uh, people who are aggressive. The customer is the customer is the customer and the customer is always right. No matter how aggressive somebody is, for example, as long as you keep a smile and you apologize, there's how far their anger can go or their outrage can be. Um, we as a business, we, even when we're employing people, we, we try not to employ people that are short-tempered. So when you're coming for interviews, there's certain things that we do just to make ruffle you a bit, okay? By the time you respond to the ruffling, we know that you are not ready. Because also the caliber of people that we work with as, as a business are women who are very well traveled and they know what customer service is. So it's important for us to develop our people. With diverse, some of the things, are, some of them come as surprises. Some also, even as a bridal makeup artist, certain cultures are different. So there's certain areas in Nigeria. When I train my people, I tell them, there are people in this part of, the, of Nigeria. When you are doing makeup for them, be ready for this and that. Okay? There are some other people who, when you go, and it's not, it's not generalizing, this is what I have found from my own experience. Um, wh whether it's because of the way the houses are, when there, there's a wedding, I don't know. But we, we have to respond to them accordingly. You know, it's, it, yes, they are diverse, um, but you have to know the diversity that you are ex experiencing and respond to the diversity as you go along. But I think the general rule is, let's just be decent. You know, smile, as I said, compliment, um, um, no matter how some, angry someone is, when you apologize and say you're sorry over and over again, sincerely, not with an attitude. Because sometimes the customer sees it's not just what you say, it's also how your, your body language, okay? And things like that, you are, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The customer is getting more and more angry. 
you know. So if you're if you know that you have those problems now, you need to check them before you start a business because you need customer service for your business. Thank you. Okay, Tara, Tara, I want you to sit down for a minute. Okay. Now, uh, I, I want to take some, get some statistics out of the business. You started in your mother's house. 12,000, 15,000 naira. 15,000 naira makeup box. Makeup box. Now, you have how many locations? 12. She has 12 branches across the country. Where's your head office? In Lekki, VI. Um, Lekki, um, yeah, you were Lagos. in VI. Yes, we're well, in then We moved to Lekki. You moved to Lekki. Mm. And then how many people are employed? 95. 95 people are employed directly. Oh, wait, 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 wait. 95 people are employed directly. Yeah. How many people have you facilitated? 3,000 beauty reps, over 3,000 beauty reps. Ladies who have bought our products started off their business as beauty reps. Okay, 3,000 beauty reps generated within the economy. Then yeah. makeup artists, people who have trained and started up their business as makeup artists, over a thousand. Over another thousand. Yes. That makes about 4,000 yes. people. 95 full-time employment, 4,000 women that have been empowered in the beauty business and products promoting Nigerian brand, Nigerian names that are being sold widely across Nigeria. And I know you are looking at taking them into West African West African market and the Nigerian flag is still flying. Are you halfway through your vision? Nowhere near it. But you've still got a lot of, of, of way to go. do. Yeah. Guys, how many years? 15 years. In 15 years. <laughs> do you understand the point I'm making? It's possible. She didn't start because she has a millionaire father. So this wasn't about money. 15,000 naira, a mother's house. That's all. From the 15,000 naira, no office, no location, no business that existed before. A vision, an idea observed, translated into a possible business. In 15 years, has multiplied to facilitate 4,000 people that are empowered, who are empowered empowering other people so there's a multiplier effect. 95 people that work directly, a major beauty product line that proudly flies the Nigerian flag and that is going to the rest of the world. Why? There are Nigerians in the diaspora everywhere and products that are specifically produced for the Nigerian skin and the Nigerian people can creep into every country that Nigerians are and sip back from them to other nationalities who have dark skin, who can discover the beauty of it. We're a great country, with great people. We're smart, we're thinking, and we can make it happen. And Tara is a good evidence of what you can do. And that's the whole idea of the Inspire Ministry. Ignite from dreams to reality. Thank you, you for being a good example for being a good example of what Nigeria is and what Nigeria will be and Thank for you. inspiring the people here and the people watching at home and for being a testimony of what we're going to produce going forward will we do it? Yes. Yes. if you know that you're going to take up the challenge raise up your hand and I hope that as many people as are at home and are watching I've got their hands up as well. Because we can change the story of this country and it doesn't have to take many years. God bless you. Thank you very much. Send in your comments, questions, and shout outs to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Ignite TV, Twitter slash Ignite TV NG, and check out our website, www.ignite-tv.com 